Hey everyone, Five Eyes here. I'm doing uh, this video on range troop attack and specifically for when you're attacking um, a, a, a keep in a solo hit. So I get a lot of people asking about how to improve the range troop buff and there's obviously, as I've just been going through it, loads of different ways to do that and a lot of them will be fairly small amounts but they all add up quite quite quickly and there's a lot of people I see as well who are hitting keeps and not doing well and wondering why and it's usually that the buffs are much lower than they should be particularly the range troop attack buff which is the one that most people will use in the earlier part of the game for for any sort of pvp uh, battles so that's what I want to try and focus on. I'm not going to be looking at range troop attack for in-city or any kind of defending or joining alliance wars or anything like that. It's just going to be on solo hits. So it's either range troop attack, attacking range troop attack or marching range troop attack that I'm looking for. So my range troop buff is about 1,420, uh, something like that, uh, when I'm using a, a city buff. So that's what I've that's what I've sort of tried to work or get to um, when I've been going through the keep and trying to work out where all the buffs come from. I'm lacking about 20, 25% maybe um, in terms of what I've found. So I must be missing something somewhere. So if anyone notice any, anything I've missed, then please let me know in the comments. That'd be great because I can't find what it is. Um, but... Let's make a start. So the easy one and probably the biggest one that you'll get um, an easy sort of win for your buff is in the academy and in research. So there's two places here that will give you a range attack buff and one is in the military tree. So you've got Toxophily, don't know whether I'm pronouncing that right, which is 100%. So that's actually probably the biggest single buff you will get in the game. And hopefully anyone who's, well, uh, re uh, any kind of reasonable level will have already fully researched that. You've also then got two smaller ones. One is troop morale, which is 10%. And then you've got super troop morale, which is 40%. So in total, you're getting 150% just from that military tree. The other one is in the military advance. So... There's two in here. One is accuracy, which gives you 40%. And then you've got advanced accuracy further down here, which is quite expensive to get. Uh, you need a lot of gold and speed ups and research stones, but that will give you another 40% as well. So in total in the academy, you're getting 230% range buff alone. The next one, which obviously most people, um, unless they're over K well, K36 or above, won't have, is the Military Academy. So this can give you massive buffs as it goes up in up in level. So I'm currently building Military Academy 2, so that will hopefully make some difference for me. But at the moment, I've only done Military Academy 1, and it's not fully complete, but it's pretty much there for all the, the range troop attack ones. So... You've got in total in here 12%, there's 6% um, in this one, and then you've got, I think it's in the mounted one, yeah, it also gives you um, range troop attack, 6% there. So there's 12% purely range troop attack in the military academy. So not much, but if you actually go all the way through to Military Academy 5, then you will be getting 210% added to your buff. So pretty big as you go through the through the levels. The next sort of big win for buffs is obviously with your general, which is massively important. So I use Electra, and I appreciate there's going to be loads of different variations on this all the buffs will be slightly different depending on which general you choose but um yeah i'm going to go through what i've got because that's the easiest way and you can obviously check your own but electra the first sort of things to look at are the main skill so hers is 
increase these raised troops out by 15% and a further 20% when she brings a dragon. So as long as the dragon's equipped, you're getting 35% from her main skill book. And she also accepts the um, range troop skill uh, attack skill book as well. So that's another 25%. So in total, that is uh, 60% just with the skill books. You've then got specialties. So if you've got enough rune stones, then you can uh, have a special, fully specialize her, make them all gold. So in this one, she's got 10, 10 another 10 and 26, so 56 in total with specialties. And then you've got also the Ascension as well. So she's got 5% on the first one, another five on the fourth, and then you've got another 25%. So that's 35% in total for the Ascensions. And then also uh, is the her sort of base attack. Um, number as well so that gives a percentage of 219% so important I suppose to point out that that's increased obviously not just by cultivating but by uh, enhancing in terms of the first five stars and then ascending as well afterwards and then you've also got the monarch level which is really important so each time I'm nearly going to level 37 so that'll increase uh, attack stats and then in turn the um, the troop attack percentage here as well and also the victory column improves the stats as well so if you go over here then it's not much but it increases the general attributes by one percent as well so and as that increases in level the percentage increase goes up to i think five percent so that's another way of increasing your buffs but the general obviously is a massive amount of um, a massive part of your range attack buff in addition to the main general you should also have an assistant general um, I use Charles so he gives 40% in addition and then well, there's no ranged attack um, skill book because on him because um, it's on Electra, but you do have the specialties. So I'm working on those. I think I'll have all these three nearly gold by next week, something something like that. So that will give me another. What are we looking at? Another thirty percent for for him alone. And then once those three are unlocked, that's a big thing because it means I can unlock or start working on the full specialty work, which will give some much bigger buffs uh, for range troop attack if I can get it up um, high enough because those rune stones are always difficult to get hold of. So that's that's the other thing. There's no point um, to be made about gear because he's uh, it, it doesn't work for the assistant general. So if we go back to Electra, <clears throat> the other big one is obviously gear. And in total, I've got uh, in gear range attack buffs is about 169%. So it all depends on what gear you use, what combinations, that sort of thing. But this is that's what I've got. So there's if I was using the the golden um the plant Plantagenic bow, then that would give me about another, I can't remember, about another 30 35% range attack buff just from the actual gear attributes. And there's obviously other things I could be using, but this is what I've got. So that's another way of doing it. The other thing is that you should always take account not just of the buffs that you're getting from the actual or the basic attributes of the the, um, the gear but also the set buffs as well so it's sometimes more beneficial to combine them or you know rather than just having all one set so there's no real point in me having four pieces of Aries and then uh, only two of the um, these two freedom ones because I get some extra buff or an extra 10% buff from 
the Achaemenidae here as well. So always sort of work out what what works best, including set buffs, because they can be quite useful as well. So you can see on these freedom um, two pieces, you're getting a 25% buff on top. The other element of that is obviously refining. So the two pieces that you can re refine for attack are the the bow and the, the ring. So you've got, if you're using uh, the Ares or Akinmenidae, then it's going to be 100% or up to 100% for for each one. So potential for up to 200%. With Civ Gear, it's going to be up to 240% in total. So yeah, obviously it's better to have Civ Gear for that reason that you can refine it and get another probably 20%, well, yeah, around about 20% buff increase for each item you have from the re, with the refines. So I've got about 162%. To be honest, these aren't refined that well. <clears throat> they're not bad, but they they could be better. But um, yeah, I did them quite a while ago. So, um, okay. So the the other thing I suppose is that obviously, um, Electra needs a dragon to actually get that extra twenty percent buff. So that leads us on to looking at dragons, which are another big part of range buffs. <clears throat> so I'm assuming you don't have laid on, but if you have an all-star account then you probably don't need to be watching this video but you uh but yeah laid is obviously a, a, the better dragon if you have um have him but from the majority of people you're going to have this, the the celtic demon so in terms of what this gives you uh, you can access what the actual uh, skill effect that it has so it's got range troop attack of 25 percent at level 10 that will obviously go up and down as you um depending on where you are and then you've got the dragon talents. So you've got an extra 20% for the first talent, another 10% for the second talent, so 30% there. And then obviously you can refine it as well. So with this dragon, you can only refine it up to 15% max. So you're going to be getting 60% potentially on your refines as well for range attack. So the dragon itself actually, the, or the, what I've got on the dragon, gives 102%. So again, a fairly significant um, impact. And you've also got the, if you don't have the dragons, then you've got spirit, spirit Beast as well. So I don't really do much with Spirit Beasts. I probably should do more. But Kong is one that will give you, if you have him, use him, then he would give you Range Troop Attack. Uh, the nine tail fox also does, and the thunder scorpion is sort of the basic one that also gives you range attack. So those are the spirit beasts that you can also use if you don't have the, have a dragon, or you may need to use a spirit beast. For example, if you've got Mason Weaver as the uh, as the assistant general to make sure she gets her full buff when you use the, her her as an assistant general. Now, I'm guessing everybody was going to know this, but Monarch Gear is another one. This one will give you 50%. You can use the uh, the staff or the dagger. So the dagger will give you more, but it doesn't give you the sort of single attack power. I don't know whether that really makes much difference, uh, to be honest. But yeah, you can use one of those. So that's 50%. Obviously, it changes depending on what level you're on. The Monarch Talents. So when you are doing any sort of PvP, it's best to have a separate uh, talent. You can change them at the bottom, depending on what you're doing. So usually you've got one for just sort of usual farming or nap, uh, nap sort of um, setting. And then you've got one for PvP. So this is the important one, the subordinate city attack. So that means that each subordinate city you have will boost your troop attack by 4%. So if you've got eight subs like me, then that's going to give you an extra 32%. And that leads us on to sub cities. So Japan sub city is the culture is the only 
one that will give you true uh, troop attack buff. So that will give you 8% for a purple, 10% for a gold, and 2% for a white one. So if you had 10% for gold and you had 9 gold Japans, then that's going to give you 90%. So I've got quite a few purple um, and blue Japans, and that gives me about 52%. So not bad. I still want to make a couple of changes, but generally, yeah. It's, it's pretty good. I don't think I'm going to get many goals um, anyway. So, yeah, that's where we are with Subcity. So if you want to improve your, your range attack buff, then you just need to get some Japans. The other thing to sort of mention there, if you don't have any, uh, if you have a really low level main sub, so if you've got a, I don't know, a, a white or green level main sub then you could put your culture as Korea because that gives a just having that culture gives you five percent uh five percent range troop attack buff and I don't mean the actual sub itself but it's when you go into the culture feature here so if you look at uh, this you can see yeah it's got five percent so the only reason you change it to Japan normally, if it's blue or above, is because it's going to give you, uh, if this is blue or above, rather, then it's going to give you 6%, so it's not really worth it if you're doing, um, if you're changing it for PvP. The other, th what have we got next? So, Art Hall is the other big one. So these, I think, get really big in terms of the buffs. Um very difficult to upgrade them but these are the ones that will give you more so i'm on level three for most of them and that's at 12 percent there for the excalibur you've got the nike which gives you 18 percent and then you've also got the golden eagle which gives you all troops attack at 10 percent, which i don't have so because i can't get napoleon um, even though I, I keep trying, I can't get him. Um, so yeah, that will probably give me another 18%. I'm not, I'm not sure exactly, but because I've already got enough scrolls to upgrade it straight away twice. So yeah, it's frustrating, but that will give me some more buff when I eventually get it. So the other one, um, a minor thing really is the, uh, duty generals so let's go into it here so you've got john the first of portugal who gives you if you have him as the arch camp officer he will give you a five percent range troop attack increase good my battery's about to die so i think he's the only one in the arch camp who does that but with the amount of generals that keep coming out i have lost track so there might be other generals that do give you some different buffs but he's the only one i'm aware of the other one is ashoka who is the keep officer the premium keep officer i don't have him but he will give you a 20 percent range attack bonus if he's the keep officer and one thing I did notice actually is that uh, if you ascended uh, John, then he will give you at f the fifth star, he will give you, or tenth star rather, he'll give you r another range attack, a troop attack of 10% when he's the archer officer. All the other ones are in the city, but that one isn't. So that was just something I noticed earlier. So the other big one. In the arch camp is blazons so you've got two things here one is the valor set the the um the set buff which will give you 10 percent and then you've got your two uh, here so you've got your shadow and light blazons which will give you whatever it is depending on how lucky you are and how much you upgrade them so i've got uh, about 39 percent worth from these two so i'm tr this one's at level 14 because it's 
actually got three decent buffs there, so I'm going to be hoping that when I get it to level 15, I get another range attack or marching range troop attack buff on that one, but I'm sure it won't be, expecting troop, uh, troop capacity or something. But those are the two that can be uh, that can give you a ranged troop attack buff. Other things to note: so VIP levels. So if you're VIP level seventeen and above, you get a troop all troops attack buff, which goes up to something crazy at VIP level twenty five. Yeah, like a hundred percent. So yeah. Not gonna get, never gonna get either of those, and the other sort of temporary ones are the shrine. So I'm upgrading that as well at the moment because at level thirty six you get when you offer twenty times in a day, then you will get twenty five percent. Right now I'm getting twenty twenty percent, and that changes at different levels. I think it's thirty two and thirty. And maybe 27, I can't remember. So yeah, you get a different amount. So if you're going, in, going into SVS or Battlefield, then you should offer 20 times so that you get that buff for the next 24 hours. You've also got your city buffs. So if you go into all troops attack here, I usually just use the 20% one, uh, but you can use a 30% one for an hour or a 50% one for 10 minutes. Or even a cheaper 10% one, which I don't think I've ever used. And I think that's pretty much it. Except, no, there is a couple more things. So, active skill. is it, These are all ones that I don't have. But I think they're worth definitely worth mentioning. So, the normal um, dragons in the pasture don't have any active skills that will improve your buff. But the sacred dragons do, so... Um, Norway Ridge has an all troops attack buff. I don't know what that goes to because I haven't got it, but um, it obviously does something. And I'm sure the other dragons do stuff as well. But again, I've not got any of those. So that's the main thing I think in the actual keep itself. The other one is the castles. So, depending on what you've got, again, I've not got any of these, um, but lots of them have different buffs. I think the Mirror Lake one is the one with the best range troop attack buff at 30%. So, that's another one. If you've got, <laughs> if you've got one of these keeps, then you can use one of those uh, to improve your range buff. And... I should say as well, Historic Cities will be the other one. But again, I don't think there's going to be many people needing my advice when they've got Historic Cities. So I th the only other one, actually, because you can use, I think you can use this with a uh, with a, a, a key decoration, is the, in the Miracle and Dragon section, when you get level 16, <laughs> sorry, level 15 dragons, uh, for six dragons then that will give you another five percent so that's a lot of work for five percent buff so i'm not worried about that one so i think that's everything i can eke out and hopefully that helps give you an idea of where you can look to improve your buffs some things are easier than us actually i know what i've missed uh the civilization treasure that was that's exactly what I've missed. So yeah, the Faber's egg is the other one that increases your range troop attack. So that's probably what I was missing before. I don't know whether there's any other ones that I that also have some kind of attack. No. So yeah, so it's just the Faber's egg. As you increase that, it will give you better buffs. If you want to go when you get it to level three, it gives 15%. So yeah, that's the that's the other one that I think I was missing. 
and hopefully that although that doesn't quite account for it so there must be something else but anyway <laughs> there must be about i think i'm missing 15 percent somewhere so yeah if you see anything else let me know but hopefully that gives you yeah some idea of what you need to look at to try and improve your, your your range buff and obviously it's applicable for any other troop type as well but just in slightly different ways so yeah thanks a lot for watching and uh, yeah leave a comment if you've got any advice on what i've missed or any if it's helped at all thanks very much bye